Now that I've reviewed the original animated film, let's talk about the live-action adaptation of Disney's 101 Dalmatians. Big Days Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 1996 Adventure comedy flick 101 Dalmatians, released by Disney in 1996. This, of course, is a live-action adaptation of the 1961 animated film of the same name. Now, I thought I'd do its, this review just to promote the release of Cruella, which will be opening tomorrow. And also, because this year is... the because later on this year will be this version's 25th anniversary. And this came out in 96, which was 35 years later after the original film got released. Well, well, over 35 and a half years anyway. It would be nearing it on 36. <laughs> anyway, the film was directed by Stephen Herrick, who, who recently did movies like Critters, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, The Mighty Ducks, and just recently, a year before this came out, Mr. Holland's Opus. The film stars Jeff Daniels, along with Jolie Richardson, Joan Plowright, Hugh Laurie, Mark Williams, and Tim McEnery. Oh, oh yeah, and don't forget Glenn Close, who played the, the villainous Cruella de Vil. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into our story. American video game designer Roger Dearly lives with his pet Dalmatian Pongo in London. One day, he, Pongo sets his eyes on a female Dalmatian named Purdy. After a frantic chase through the streets of London that ends in St. James Park, Roger discovers that Pongo likes Purdy. Her owner, Ania Campbell Green, falls in love with Roger when they meet. They both fall into the lake as a result of their dogs chasing each other. But they return to Roger's home and Ania accepts his proposal. They get married along with Purdy and Pongo. Ania works as a fashion designer at the House of Deville. Her boss, the pampered and very glamorous Cruel Deville, has a deep passion for fur, going so far as to have a taxidermist, Mr. Skinner, skin a white tiger at the London Zoo to make it into a rug for her. Ania, inspired by her Dalmatian design, designs a coat made with spotted fur. Cruella is intrigued by the idea of making garments out of actual Dalmatians and finds it amusing that it would seem as if she was wearing Aenea's dog. So Aenea soon discovers that Purdy is pregnant and is then informed that she, Anita, is too, much to her shock. Sometime later, Cruella visits their home and expresses contempt upon meeting Roger. Her initial disgust at them having a baby turns to excitement when she finds out Purdy is expecting two. Several weeks later, she returns when a litter of 15 puppies are born and offers Roger and Ania 7,500 pounds for them, but they refuse. Enraged, Cruella dismisses Ania and vows revenge against her and Roger. One winter evening, she has her henchmen, Jasper and Horace, break into their home and steal the puppies while Roger and Ania are walking in the park with Pongo and Purdy. Along with 84 other Dalmatians that were previously stolen, they delivered them to her ancient country estate, Deville Mansion. Cruella also asks Skinner to kill and skin them to create her coat. With the family devastated at the loss of their puppies, Pongo uses the twilight bark to carry the message via the dogs and other animals of Great Britain, while Roger and Anania notify the Metropolitan Police. A dog who had witnessed the stolen puppies follows Jasper and Horace to the mansion and finds all of them inside before helping them escape under the duo's noses, and they make their way to a nearby farm where they are later joined by Pongo and Purdy. Okay, now to the ending and final act. You know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below to avoid the ending spoilers. If you've seen the movie already, please continue on. Thank you. Here we go.
Okay, you've been warned. Cruella arrives at the mansion and soon discovers what has happened. Angry with the thieves' failure, she decides to carry out the job herself, while Jasper and Horace attempt to search for them also. After several mishaps, Jasper and Horace discover nearby police on the hunt for Cruella and her henchmen and hand themselves in, joining Skinner, who was beaten earlier while trying to kill Lucky, one of the 15 puppies, who apparently, if you recall, almost died, uh, just like in the original, who had been left behind. Meanwhile, Cruella tracks the puppies to the farm where they are hiding and tries to retrieve them. However, the animal's out with her, causing her to fall into a vat of molasses and get thrown through the window into a pig pen. Shortly afterwards, the fleeing Dalmatians, including Lucky, are found and sent home via the Suffolk Constabulary. Constabulary, excuse me. While the cops were looking for Cruella at the farm where they finally arrest her. In the police van, she berates Jasper, Horace, and Skinner for their incompetence before they are all sprayed by a skunk which she had mistaken for her purse. And Pongo, Purdy, and their puppies are reunited with Roger and Anita. After being informed that the remaining 84 puppies have no home to go to as they have not yet been claimed by their original owners, they decide to adopt then bring the tell to 101. Roger designs a successful video game featuring Dalmatian puppies as the protagonist and Cruella as the villain. And they move to the countryside with their millions. Roger and Ania have a baby daughter and a year later the puppies have grown up with puppies of their own. End of story. So what did I think of the live action version of Wandering Dalmatians? 101 Dalmatians, I'd say it was pretty good. I remember seeing this before, and I've seen it several times. I've seen it well, on video cassette work not so long ago, which is why I didn't want to watch it on Disney+. Plus. But anyway, I have revisited it on Disney+, Plus um, since the day I got the service. Anyway, John Hughes was co-producer, and well, the burglars and Cruella get into so much Craziness, kind of similar to what we would see in one, well, one of Hughes' own productions, that being the Home Alone franchise. Well, Hughes co produced this with Ricardo Mistress. Now, I still think it's pretty funny, but it did spark some controversy. Uh, because animal rights organizations protested the film's release, saying that Dalmatian sales shot up after the premiere, fueled by impulsive purchases of puppies by parents for their children, and being ill-prepared to care for a relatively difficult breed of dog past puppyhood, many of these new owners eventually surrendered their animals to pounds, where many dogs ended up being euthanized. Yikes. Nevertheless, the film did pretty well, as a matter of fact. Despite getting mixed reviews and what have you, uh, I'd still say this film's pretty good. Not, uh, it's almost as good as its anime counterpart, but I have to give credit to some things. Uh, the score from Michael Kamen's not too bad, but I do think the cast is really good. Glenn Close absolutely does well as Cruella de Vil. We'll find out if Emma Stone manages to try to follow in the footsteps of her when Cruella comes to theaters and to Disney Plus with Premiere Access. Playing Roger is Jeff Daniels, who has recently appeared in our movies. Of course, he was in um, Dumb and Dumber before this. He'd also go on to appear in movies such as Fly, um, Fly Away Home and RV and well, lots of other movies. Jolie Richardson plays Ania, very good performance. Joan Plowright, British actress, who I've known her from a little bit of things, most notably playing Mrs. Wilson in Dennis the Menace. Jasper is played by Hugh Laurie, who, of course, would later go on to play Mr. Lil in the, the two theatrical Stuart Lil movies, and would also go on to be well-known as TV's house, M.D., 
And Horace is played by Mark Williams, who would later go on to appear in another book app, well, another family film, that being The Borrowers with John Goodman. He'd also go on to be better known as Ron Weasley's father, Arthur Weasley, in the Harry Potter franchise. John Shrapnel plays Mr. Skinner, and Tim McEnery plays Alonzo, one of, I believe that's one of Krill's workers, I do believe. But anyway, and while despite the canines don't talk like the anime in movie, Frank Walker does provide creature sounds for Pongo and Purdy, as a matter of fact. But anyway, with a pretty good cast and what have you, wondering when down means just live action version, it's not too bad. I mean, like I said, it's almost as good as its anime counterpart. So, would I recommend this one? I'd say, yeah, sure, go ahead. Anyway, the film did well despite mixed reviews. The film went on to make $320 million worldwide and became the sixth highest grossing film in 96. It also got not, and of course, Close got nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actress in a musical or comedy movie, that is. It was also nominated for a BAFTA Award for Best Makeup Effect. And there was also a sequel called Wandering Two Damnations. I'll review that some other time. And that was released four years later in 2000. But again, I'll review that another time, okay? So give the the live action remake of Wandering One Dalmatians a try. It's pretty good. So, what are your thoughts on the Wandering One Dalmatians live action remake? You can tell me in the comments section below. If you like the video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel. Be a part of the Big D Nation. I'll be right back. Okay. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of the epic disaster flick, The Towering Inferno. And stay tuned, a spoiler-free review of Cruella will be coming up this weekend. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you like this, you may want to check out these other fun-filled canine flicks and what have you. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the actual anime version of Wandering One Dalmatians. The upper right-hand corner is my review of the original Lady and the Tramp, also from Disney. Or if you want to see another live-action remake from Disney, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my review of Maleficent. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.